So I've lived in Lithuania now for just over two years. Despite now being married to a lovely Lithuanian woman, I have yet to formally learn the language through classes or with a tutor. I could list all the excuses for why I haven't gotten around to this yet, but that's not the topic of today's video. Today is about my first impressions of the Lithuanian language and how it structurally differs from English. This video isn't intended to be an introductory Lithuanian language lesson, but if you find languages interesting, this might be a good insight into why people find Lithuanian such a hard language to learn. If you're watching this as a Lithuanian, feel free to comment with additional examples or better explanations. I'm sure it will be useful to me, and maybe others too. Also, I don't know many terms when it comes to linguistics, such as names for different tenses or the names for certain accents, so please go easy on me if I don't describe something using the correct terminology. But with all that out of the way, let's get started. Probably the first thing I noticed, and what other native English speakers will also notice, is the extra letters present in the Lithuanian alphabet. Some of these letters include ch, sh, and z. In total, I believe there are eight letters in the Lithuanian alphabet that don't exist in the standard English alphabet. When it comes to the three examples I gave, these are probably the easiest to understand. This little V or check mark on top is like adding an H to the English letter that it looks like. Examples that clearly demonstrate this include Chicago, which is Lithuanian for Chicago, Chocolates, which is Lithuanian for chocolate, and Jale, which is Lithuanian for the color green. I can even say that, so... <laughs> then, there are some letters that exist both in Lithuanian and English that look the same but are pronounced differently. The ones that come to mind and appear the most often for me are the letters J and C. J in Lithuanian is used in the same way the letter Y is used in English. For example, if you see these words, you would pronounce them as Japonia, Latvia, and Jonas. C appears to function in the same way a TZ combination would in English. So you would read these words as Tsitrana, Tsukinia, and Tsaras. As you may have already noticed, some English words use C in a similar way. It seems to me that when it is used in this way in English, it's more like an S. Like citrus, cinnamon, celebrate, and cement. But in Lithuanian, that invisible T is clearly heard. Of course, with English, the use of the letter C isn't too consistent, because there's also the hard C, such as the word consistent, or car, or country. Then there's the fact that Lithuanian doesn't use the English letters Q, W, and X. Excellent. Exactly. <laughs> the result of these absences is that foreign names in Lithuanian documents have had to be adapted. Q is most often swapped with a K, W with a V, and depending on how X is used, it might be substituted with a K and S combination. However, earlier this year, breaking a decades-long deadlock, Lithuanian Parliament recently allowed the original spelling of non-Lithuanian names in Latin-based characters in personal documents. Something that was a big win for Lithuanians of Polish ancestry. As a native English speaker, there is so much complexity in the English language that I take for granted, and don't realize as inconsistencies in the language. Like how the words genetic and giraffe start with a G, but that same letter can be used in the words golf and gorilla. In general, I feel like Lithuanian spelling is a lot more consistent when it comes to pronunciation. Moving on from alphabetical differences, another major difference from English is the presence of gendered nouns. While English has its complexities and inconsistencies, I do appreciate the fact that nouns aren't gendered in the way that they are in French, Spanish, Italian, Lithuanian, and many, many more languages. 
Needing to remember whether a Lithuanian word is male or female impacts the spelling of the adjective describing it. For example, the Lithuanian word for flower, gele, is feminine while the word for house, namas, is masculine. So beautiful flower is graži gele, while beautiful house is grajus namas. This is a good transition to the next big difference I notice, the need to conjugate adjectives and nouns. If an object is good or great or bad or green or whatever else, you'll need to change that descriptive word depending on whether it's describing a masculine object or a feminine object, and then things change again if it's plural or singular. I also see that prepositions don't work in the same way as they do in the English language. In English, I can say I'm in Lithuania and in Vilnius. I can say that something is for Lithuania or for Vilnius. In English, you simply just add a separate word to the noun. But in Lithuanian, the object itself changes to reflect the preposition. So in Lithuania is Lietuvoje, while in Vilnius is Vilnuje. For Lithuania is Lietuvė, and for Vilnius is Vilnuje. There are probably better examples out there, but this is what I could come up with. The final thing I notice with Lithuanian is how different the emphasis on various syllables are. Okay, stop! It's assess the window, not asses the window. <laughs> you put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. So many words, which feel obvious to me as being pronounced in a certain way, turn out as something completely different. For example, I would pronounce these words as genoma, lietuvišku, and palanga. But as verified by my wife, these would be pronounced as genoma, Lietuvišku and Palanga. Despite these complexities of the Lithuanian language, I notice that there are so many cognates. That is to say, words having the same linguistic derivation. If you're watching this and don't know a single word of Lithuanian, I bet you can identify the meaning of these Lithuanian words. Telefonas, migracija, fantasia, chocolatas, pizza, and muzeus. And of course, the list goes on and on. But ultimately, Lithuania is my new home, and I really do need to sit down and learn the language properly one day. After all, my wife is probably tired of me asking her to translate random words on TV and billboards. If you're still watching this, well, thanks for watching all of it. But also, I'd love to hear your experience of learning different languages and what you found encouraging and difficult in your journeys. Also, do let me know if you want more language-related videos. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and an extra special thank you to the few viewers that signed up as members of the channel. Your support means a lot and it helps me to keep going.